guys, this is Nick Grzynski with D3 Technologies, and here is your D3 Tech Tip for the week. We're going to take a look at how to limit the amount or the file size of the code that you're generating. So a lot of the older controls, older machines, uh, have a limited amount of memory that they can have in a program. So let me just create an adaptive clearing toolpath real quick. I'm going to grab a quarter inch NML. And I'm just going to move the heights a little bit past the bottom here. And it looks like we got hundred thousandths for the load, twenty thousandths for radial and axial stock to leave. So we're looking at eighty three point nine kilobytes initially with the default settings there. So one way to limit the amount of code and probably the, the best way or that's gonna make the largest improvement is to come into your passes tab and turn on smoothing. Let me just hover over that for a second. So you can see here, with smoothing turned on, it's going to limit some of the amount of point-to-point -point movements created from adaptive clearing. And what it's actually doing is putting in some G2 and 3 arcs inside of there when it can fit within inside of our tolerance. So just by checking that, saying OK, we went from 80-something down to 46. So we almost cut that code in half just by turning smoothing on. And then if we post that out, you know, we should be able to see... All the G2 and 3 arc commands that are in there. So with that, a few other ways to do to limit the amount of code in your post processing inside your properties here. You can come down, turn your sequence numbers to no, so that's going to limit the amount of data created. Um, you can also turn off your write tool and write machine. And uh, show notes. If you had any notes in there, you can have that set to no also. So that's going to limit some of the amount of code. Another way is you can actually go in and edit the tolerance, depending on how tight the tolerance is for your particular part. You can come in there. Let's just exaggerate a little bit. We'll put 10 thousandths on there. You can see this is parametrically driven. So the smoothing tolerance, if I right click here and go to show expression or edit expression, it's the tolerance times 0.1. So, you could also just type over that if you want to change your smoothing and tolerance. I'm not going to get into all the details of where these numbers need to be, but typically your tolerance is larger than your smoothing tolerance. So we were down to 46, that takes us down to 41.9. Um, Maybe adaptive is just something that your machine can't handle also. So another method that you can use is, and I see this pretty common, is using 2D contour with offset passes. So if I come in here, let's use that same tool. I'm going to select this outside edge here for the, the contour selection. And right now it's going to selected contour. I'm going to say model bottom. We'll go to the same place we did last time. On the passes tab, here's where we can turn on roughing passes. So right now it's just going to do a single pass. If we go back in there, turn on roughing passes, you can exaggerate this. I'll just say 100 passes with a step over. We'll use the same one. 0.1. And with this, if I just say OK at this point, it's going to add 100 passes, which I want to limit these passes to fit with inside of what our true stock is. So to do that, you just go back in there and turn on stock contours. So by turning stock contours on, it makes the software aware of where that stock material is that it can remove. And now it's just coming in and cutting those specific areas. And now you can see we limited that code down to 7.3 kilobytes. Obviously, we didn't pocket out the material here. We need a different strategy for that. But that is a good way to rough out the outside of the part with step over passes and um, instead of using adaptive. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned for the next one.